What up players, it's Warboss Tay up in this mug doing a video unboxing the Start Collecting Box set for the Eldar from Games Workshop for their Warhammer 40,000 game. And uh, I'm so excited about box unboxing this, showing you the different models and uh, assembling them. At the end of this video, we're going to show you how they look all put together. Really excited to do that. But first, when you open the box, this is one of the first things you see. It's the Next Steps sheet and it shows you budding and new inexperienced collectors what you want to be thinking about purchasing next after you get this box set. In the box you get a fire prism that can also be built as a night spinner tank. You also have three uh, wind riders. I guess they're not called elder jet bikes anymore and you get one farseer on a sky runner. So we'll talk about each of those components but uh, I, I really like the new plastic kits that Games Workshop has released for the Eldar, like these Wraith Blades, um, and I guess, is that the only thing that's new in plastic? Oh, the Harlequins, which I, I guess is their own different thing. This is for the Craft Worlds, so Craft World Eldar, if you're playing these guys, these are some things you want to be thinking about getting next. The uh, box also contains a transfer sheet, which I think is interesting because it contains all of the Eldar transfer sheets you're going to need for troops, they have smaller ones here and for vehicles as well, these larger rooms. And these are for all the different craft worlds. Alaitok, Yanden, Bieltan, Samhan. And uh, I, th I think it's really cool. You've got a variety of different, it's not just their world runes, but also some interesting little, I, I guess you would call them like campaign badges or different unit or vehicle markings. The ones I find most interesting are these variations on the world runes, like you can see this one here, the heart wrapped in thorny ivy vein, uh, vines. The BL10 world rune here, you want to take a look at it, is this half ankh with a heart in it. And it symbolizes uh, rebirth, reincarnation, how the Eldar believe that they've got these um, spirit stones which they enchant to be able to capture their soul when their physical form dies. So an Eldar on the battlefield will die and his soul will get trapped into the spirit stone. After the battle, they try to collect as many spirit stones as they can so they don't you know, get lost forever. And then they bring them back to their craft world where they plug them into this giant network and the Eldar are essentially able to continue living, holding their consciousness and their awareness in this big uh, internet <laughs> on one of their world ships. I think it's such a cool concept, the spirit stone. And it's also interesting because the thing they're most afraid of is their spirit stones being captured by their greatest enemy, Slanesh, the evil chaos god, because what, what that thing likes to do is take those spirit stones and eat them up, crunch, yum, yum, yum. So Eldar are terrified of that, which is why they uh, are trying to fight so hard to keep what they have left of their civilization. I uh, think that the spirit stones for me as a painter are just interesting to paint because they're uh, essentially gemstones, reflective gemstones uh, in a cabochon setting, as my lady boss likes to say. It's uh, round, reflective, really fun to paint, lot, do lots of uh, interesting paint uh, reflection techniques reflective techniques and so yeah why don't we just start with the instructions here you've got your farseer sky runner farseer basically means wizard and i know you can't see their faces under their helmets but if you are new to the hobby or new to collecting or new to eldar they're basically elves in space space elves and um i think it's interesting how games workshop has went with that theme throughout the the years and they've managed to craft them a very interesting culture they're a, a a race that used to be masters of the galaxy and they're slowly dying out because of their arrogance and hubris and creating slanesh from uh, all of their depravity and their excessive ways way 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 like centuries ago and now they're just slowly dying out and uh, the Eldar story is a, a very sad and tragic one because they're essentially just waiting to die off and they're, they're trying to rebuild their civilizations on these world ships because all of their Eldar planets were destroyed so they just go around these giant spaceships that are essentially their uh, worlds, their planets and uh, they're, they're having a hard time of it. So 
The Eldar Farseer on the Skyrunner. It's a wizard on a jet bike, basically. Farseer Skyrunner. And you can equip him with either of these helmet options and either of these weapon options, the spear or the sword. Personally, I like the large crest. It shows from across the table that this model is a special character and uh, it's one to keep an eye on. And it's also a good way as a painter to show a show off your technique on a more focal piece character. I like the spear as well, not sure how uh, effective that is in the game, but I never go by rules in the game. I always go by the rule of cool. If something looks cool, I will oftentimes take it just because, or I'll build it on the model just because I, I think it looks cool. And hey, if your opponent is not okay with you saying, hey, I know he's decked out with the spear, but the sword is more useful, so just think that he's using the sword. If your opponent's not cool with that, or if you're going to a tournament and they won't let you do that, then, you know, maybe it's it's not the best person or the best game to be playing, or hey, just, I guess, magnetize or build a second one. But I like to build for coolness factor. The coolness factor is is number one. You also get a very modified, truncated, edited down, watered down stat line. So if you don't have the book on hand, but you just need the stats for the figure, you can find them here. It also has a, a unit type. No special rules or weapons or equipment though. That's, I guess, like, you know, you have to have your, your rule book and all of that. But if you just need the stats really quickly to look at, they're right here on the back. On the inside, you've got the uh, 3D rendered instructions for how to assemble the model. I think these instructions have come a long way over the years. They look so good now. All the pieces are numbered and you can see with the arrows where they go. I remember when Games Workshop was first doing these instructions in the uh, early 2000s, late 90s. So there were no numbers. Uh, everything was like one step. I'm thinking of an old Space Marine instruction manual for like the Rhino or something and Everything was like so confusing to look at and put together. Now they look terrific and they show off the different weapons and uh, equipment options on the vehicle, the, the head options you can choose. They've got this little gear symbol to show that you've got a choice of which part you want to use. I think it's terrific. So kudos Games Workshop. You also get your second unit is the uh, Wind Riders. And same thing, you've got a really great step-by-step -step manual for building these models. And, you know, this is, when you think about how much it costs to produce these instructions, in addition, in addition to the miniatures, the casting and the sculpting and the packaging for the miniatures, Games Workshop, they're, they're the uh, big boys in the schoolyard. They really can afford to make their models packaged really, really nice and to include very well detailed, beautiful looking instructions. So kudos to them. And uh, I, I say like thank you for doing that because as a modeler, especially like a new modeler, if your target audience is, you know, high school kids, teenagers, early 20s, even uh, people in older 30s and, and up going into building these miniatures, you really want to give them the, the ease of putting, putting the pieces together. Make it convenient. So this is the Fire Prism slash Night Spinner's Guide. And I love how all of the instructions come with a huge detailed uh, read before assembly section. Before assembling your model kit, read through these instructions carefully. To assemble this kit, you will need plastic glue, a pair of clippers or sharp modeling knife, uh, plastic mold lines and injection markings can be removed with a modeling knife. Of course, Citadel brand ones here at the bottom. You can uh, purchase your own or use your own from any brand you want. Let's get into the miniatures. The first thing that's uh, a not a great plastic sprue is this uh, sprue of the Fire Prism Crystal as well as the little tippy bit. And uh, you also get two of these canopies for putting onto the finished fire prism. The kit also comes with a uh, little flying stands for the uh, flying vehicles as well as for the um, fire prism. So you've got, sorry, I'm trying to just find, I think I left the two stands here in the box. You get these smaller ones for the wind riders 
and you get a larger one for your fire prism tank because it's a larger, larger model. The pegs now come with these little rounded bits on top. Before they didn't, before they were just like a little boop. And uh, these rounded bits mean that you can put the model on and then angle the vehicle so it looks like they could be banking or, uh, you know, just give uh, yourself a variety of different posing for the models. And I think that is a great innovation for Games Workshop using these rounded bits. And uh, it's really good. Okay, so getting into the sprues now. Let's start with the uh, Farseer. So the Farseer comes on two separate little half sprues here. And like most character models that Games Workshop has released recently, they've crammed on all of the pieces onto these two half sprues. You've got the crested, awesome crested helmet here, the front of the Windrider, or I guess Sky, Sky Runner, Sky Cutter. Uh, the front of the jet bike for the Farseer has this awesome detailed bit on the front and uh, the rest of it is pretty similar to what we're going to be seeing with the rest of the Windrider bikes. You can choose between either of these two runes and here is the other half. The sword right there, the spear which I think again I'm going to use, I think the spear just looks awesome. You got his two <laughs> robe legs. Hers. His or hers. Who knows? Hard to tell. You can't see anything under the helmet or the robes. And yeah, that's that's it. It's going to look really, really cool when we put this guy or girl all together. So that's the first one. That's the most interesting, I think, because it's a, a single kit. It's a character kit. The next thing that I really like from this set is the fire prism. It's an interesting tank because, like I said, it's got this the clear crystal that houses in here. The instructions actually say you should paint these first, so that's what I'm going to do when I uh, build up my fire prism. I'm going to paint the housing and then uh, put the crystal in, or I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to assemble the housing and then I'm going to pop the crystal in last because you don't want to get any paint on your uh, clear plastic. I'm actually thinking of tinting the plastic with a different color. Nothing. And maybe like a, use a Tamiya clear color to paint a different, different tint. You've got the turret here. I think it's interesting you've got the main chassis of the model and then you've got the swiveling turret. The turret design is really, really cool. It's, uh, it looks very sharp and angled and it's got all these different like curved surfaces. Very different from Imperial vehicles. The human vehicles and the Space Marine vehicles look really sharp edged, boxy, chunky and clunky and the Eldar ones look uh, more organic, very alien, lots of curved lines, and uh, just really, really interesting to look at. Speaking of, here's the bottom of the chassis here. It's got all these ribbing, which is really fun to highlight and paint to show the reflection of the light bouncing off of it. Uh, you've got these little, little fiddly bits that come to the front of the, uh, the front nose part of the vehicle. Uh, this is also going to be going onto the front part. It's like the little vents as well as the thruster bits go out the back. The chassis itself, very, very iconic. All the Eldar players who've been playing Eldar for any amount of time will recognize this part because it's the basis for most of the chassis on the Eldar tank slash transport vehicles. Very cool. It's got, I think what's interesting is it's got little, little, uh, panels here where you can access like tiny little vents or, or like it looks like little buttons and things that you can use to access the workings of the tank and not sure what these are if these are also spirit stones but on on the Eldar models anytime you see one of these little bumpy bits I, I think oh that might be something I could paint up as a spirit stone or as like a some kind of colored crystal to show that they're uh, batteries or conduits or I don't know something you got the back hatch for the vehicle the doorway for the back hatch to slot into again with some little control panel bits here and you've got the pilot there in his little cockpit I'm thinking of doing two different color schemes for the pilots maybe doing one uh, with uh, light hair one doing with darker hair 
and uh, just to show some difference in them. Finally, we're going to take a look at the rest of the jet bikes. You got three, I believe these are three identical sprues, so we're only going to take a look at one of them. You've got one sprue that's actually two of the jet bike sprues, so I guess you break them up. This is what they look like, three of them. And let's uh, zoom in here to take a look at It's just basically like the Farseer one. It doesn't have the fancy, fancy pants molding or sculpting here on the front there. But uh, most of it looks like the same. The vehicle's got the same kind of shape and uh, the seat shape is the same. The rider doesn't have robes. He's got his standard Eldar armor, which is a lot of oval plates over a black bodysuit looking thing. And yeah, they don't hold weapons. The weapon is actually on the front of the vehicle. So it's either gonna be uh, this guy here or this guy here and uh, again sorry I'm not really too familiar with Eldar weaponry or what the differences are so I don't want to name them out shuriken catapult shuriken cannon uh, something like that one of these two guys is gonna be on the front there along with this guy here this also looks like a weapon so maybe one of those three attaches to the front I'm really excited to build it I'm gonna do a uh, Go, go ahead and, and, and build them up. Hopefully I can get them done in a little while and show you how they look all together. So stay tuned for part two of this video. Thanks for watching, it's already 16 minutes long. Hope you enjoyed this little look into the Start Collecting box set. Again, I don't know anything about the rules. I'm more of a painter than a gamer at this point. This is uh, for a commission, a BL10 Eldar commission. I've got a bunch of other commissions on the docket. So if you're interested and you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already. You can also follow me along on uh, the Google group. I haven't promoted the Google group in a while. Warboss Tay's 2017 painting community. Check out my other work at Twitter and Facebook and all of that stuff is down, down below in the description. <laughs> so thanks for watching everybody. Hope you're having a great day and uh, I'm off to build these space elves. Latest players! <laughs>